my little, yeah. It's a new season, yeah. It's a new day, fresh anointing. Everyone say fresh anointing. It's coming my way. It's a season of power and prosperity. It's a new season, and I got it. Come on, say, I got it. Amen, because if you don't say it, you don't get it. That's what my daddy says. Now, would you rather have a partial release or a full release? Mm. That means there's something happening that we have to enter into a full release. Amen? And I believe that right now God is releasing all kinds of stuff. In fact, he's releasing people from captivity. He's releasing people from sicknesses and diseases. He's the releaser. But there's an area where you and I want to constantly get into. He's a rewarder, amen? But sometimes in rewards, there's a release, and there's, but there is a difference. A release is when vision becomes reality. That's called a full release. When the vision becomes a reality. Why? Because it's manifested. Is everybody okay? That's called full release. Go to 2 John chapter 2, or 2 John verse 2. Let's try verse 3. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace. Is everybody with me? Good. We'll be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly when I have found some of your children walking in what? In truth. As we receive commandment from the Father. And now I plead with you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we had, have had from the beginning, that we love one another. Did you ever notice when people are, um, how can I say this in the correct word? Buzzed. They love everyone. Oh, I love you. You know, when people are out in the world, they just love. That's why they want to get high, because they want to feel the love, because they've been under such false love all the time. So you want to get. They want to get high, and and although sometimes you, you anyways, um, so. People are looking for the presence of God again. And that's why we call the Lord the Most High because in his presence is when you are filled with his presence, you are filled with his love. And the word says that a joyful heart is good medicine. So when you're miserable, your body is actually eating itself. And when you're joyful in the Lord, your body is actually beginning a process of healing. So the enemy is always trying to bring oppression. Amen? Frustration, anger, anxiousness, jealousy. Works of the flesh begin to eat your body. That's why it's called works of the flesh. It feeds off of flesh and feeds demons. Amen? But in this, when you and I are filled with God's love, so filled, the joy that's in you, you avoid or you don't let anything come and mess with you. You stay away from it. You, no, you, I'm not, you don't even let it get it close to you because you want to stay, because you know that there's a pure, pureness in God's presence and love. And it's like, man, I don't want to touch nothing. I don't want to hear nothing. And I'm not going to say nothing. Hallelujah. In verse 6, and it says, this is love. Amen. That we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we worked for, but that we may receive a what? A full reward. Again, Rewards are also associated with releases. Now, he comes and he tells us in verse 9, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Jesus does not have God. 
Abiding in the doctrine of Jesus means you know the doctrine, you believe the doctrine, you follow the doctrine, and you execute the doctrine. Does everybody understand that? If you're not doing any of those things, then you really are not a believer. And God looks at us because to believe means to follow. There's a lot of people who say, I believe. Oh, I love Jesus, but they really don't. They just say it just to please people. But the relationship is really none. It's really none. Because there's no reverence, honor, and respect. And a relate closeness with relationship, there's always reverence, there's honor, and there's respect. And in that, it's associated with love. In other words, we express ourselves by worshiping the Lord because we love him. We don't do it to please us. We do it to please him. And as we're doing something to please him, the more you do things to please him, the more you continue to deny yourself, the more you become more as his character, and the more he can get you to a place and position to receive a full release. But without full cooperation, there's not a full release. People are always looking for the hand of God instead of the face of God. That's why we must be lovers of his presence. That's why the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That means his presence because his presence is released in his righteousness. I mean, his righteousness is manifested through his presence. Amen? And his righteousness is released in his presence to me and you. So there's an area to where we are in a place to where we know that all things are going to work to the good. We know that everything he's got prepared for us is coming. But our fullness of cooperation will release a full release, not a partial. Is everybody okay? And again, he warns us, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, don't receive him into your house, nor greet him. For he who greets him or approves him shares in his evil deeds. So you got to remember that the enemy is always trying to bring you another doctrine. He's always trying to influence us and sway us. Because he's trying to prevent us from receiving a full release. Can you imagine everybody receiving a full release of God's presence? Jeez, the devil be running like crazy. Psalm 18. Verse 20. Is everybody okay? <laughs> Let's speak it. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands. Hmm. He has recompensed me. I love it. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his judgments were before me. And I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless before him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness and according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. Recompense is an area to reward. God rewards us by a full release also. Remember, a, a, a release is more associated with a vision that comes to reality and then that reality becomes manifested. In James chapter 1. James 1, and we love this verse. Verse 2. James 1, 2. My brethren, count it all joy when, not if, when you fall into various trials. 
Knowing that the testing of your faith, your connection, produces patience, endurance, death to self. But let patience and endurance have its what? Perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking what? Nothing. So this endurance is associated, and this patience is associated with endurance, consistency, waiting, till we get to a place where we're, re we're reaching the perfect work. Because where there's perfection, in other words, where there's a completion of something, there's a release of something. The Word tells us that when after we've obeyed the Word of God, the promises are released. Amen? So we are not working for anything. We do what we do because we love him. Whether we receive something or not. But there's an area and requirement of fulfillment that he's trying to get something to us and he's requiring us because it's a part of our training. That he wants us to do something and he rewards us by a full release or a manifestation. And, and, you know, the word says that he does far above all we could ever ask or think. Sometimes your thoughts will be manifested. That's a release. And he's always trying to encourage us in every area, if we'll allow him to. But when we try, when people try to reward themselves all the time, because that's what happens in the world. They try to reward themselves. Well, I did all this today. I think I'll eat a big donut. Or I did this today, and, and I think I'll, you know, the world will run to the bar or you know, reward themselves with drugs or alcohol and so forth. That's not really a reward, is it? That's a false reward. So it's better when Daddy rewards us and acknowledges than we do. Amen. Hallelujah. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect to complete, lacking nothing. And if anyone lacks wisdom, and he's saying, look, you don't have wisdom because of this. Why? Because these trials and tribulations will grant us more wisdom from above. If you're lacking this wisdom, you need to ask for it, and he'll give it to you without reproach, and it'll be given. But if you ask, only if you ask in faith, but if you ask with doubting, you're not going to get anything. Amen? For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded, unstable in all of his ways. So again, this area of patience and trials and tribulations which is going to come and we are either going in them or coming out of them. Or you're in them. Amen? You're going in, in, or out. <laughs> Endurance, consistency, waiting on the Lord... Is always associated with reaching that the perfect work and completion so that we are lacking nothing. When the word says lacking nothing, it means you are receiving a full release. Not a partial release, but a complete full release. Remember, visions become reality. When that happens, then desire becomes physical. Because a vision will always bring a desire, won't it? And then when that becomes a reality to you that it's there, you know it, you can almost taste it. And then it manifests. Now it's a full release. Is everybody okay? Second Corinthians 8. We want a full release of God's presence. That's what we're all waiting on. That's our greatest desire. We're waiting for him to just, just lift our hands and bam, we're gone. The glory of God falls and everybody's on their hands and knees crawling around drunk as a skunk. Only there's a better fragrance. It's not skunky. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 8, 18. That's what it looks like. In oh, 8, sorry. 2 Corinthians 8, 8, 8. 
I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity. Everyone say, say sincerity. Sincerity. <laughs> Sincerity of your love. <laughs> uh, by the diligence of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. What an exchange. And in this I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must what? Complete the doing of it. That is, there was a readiness to desire it, so there also may be a completion out of what you have. For if there is first a willing mind, it is accepted according to what one has, and not according to what he doesn't have. Now, one of the things that is important is we got to stop looking at what we don't have. Amen. And, and in this, if we, because there's so many times people are looking at what they don't have more than what they already have. And God never gives you any more until you use what, you've, what he's given you. Amen. So in this, there's always a completion. When you get something and you, if, like a glass of water, if you get a glass of water and you drink it, it's completed, isn't it? It's done. So then you can always go refill it, can't you? And it's the same thing when God is asking you and us, you and me to do something. He's asking us to do something. We're fulfilling something. There's a training of something. For, for me and you sometimes, it doesn't seem so important. But for him it does. Because it's the little things that are important. We're so paying attention to the bigger things than the little things are. Remember the word says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Sometimes we ignore the little things. Oh, I'll do it, but, you know. The Lord may tell you to do something, and you may think it's somebody else. Your conscience or whatever. But it's actually the Lord. And you may think that it's petty, or you put it off to do it later. And the Lord's checking us out to see if we're willing to do it now. Move now and complete. Why? He's trying to get us to a place where we are trained to move, not hesitate. You know, I, I don't like driving with someone that hesitates, especially when you're in the middle of the intersection. <laughs> Snap. Uh, what are you waiting on? You, six cars, you know. You, what are you waiting? The other car's at a red light, and you're still waiting for it to come? Anyways, that's freaky to me, especially when they're turning left and it's on my side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalms 37. Hallelujah. Psalm 37, verse 3. Must complete to activate release. We must complete to activate release. Release is activated in an area when you complete what you're supposed to do. In verse 3, is everybody there? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as a light and your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. And do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only causes harm. Wow. Seven completes will cause a release. What's the completion here? Trust. Dwell. Feed. 
delight. Commit. Rest. And wait. I'll say them again. Trust. Dwell. You're going to trust in the Lord. You're going to dwell in his presence. You're going to feed on his faithfulness. You're going to delight yourself. You're going to commit to his way. You're going to rest. So you won't lean on your own understanding. You're going to rest on him. You're going to wait patiently. Seven plea completes cause a release. Trust, dwell, feed, delight, commit, rest, and wait. That's why the word says be anxious for nothing and everything in prayer and all things will be added to you. Second Corinthians 13. I always look at full release like full throttle. I mean, when there's a full release, it's like a rain drenching storm that comes down. Hallelujah. In verse 5, examine. Now, we don't want to go beyond this word for a second because examine means check it. it. Exam, you know, like it's like an x-ray. Examine yourself. Check your fruits. Amen. Put the mirror in front of you. Check it out. Examine yourself as to whether you are walking in the faith, of whether you're walking in truth, whether you're trusting, whether you're connected. Test yourselves. So he says, examine and test yourselves. Don't worry if you don't test yourself, the devil will. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. You know, after I first got saved and baptized and praying in tongues, I was, I was always checking to see if he was there. Udaraviar, you're there. Shurubakayamasha. And I just, you feel the fires begin to whew, go through your body. I was always checking to see if he was there. Now he checks to see if I'm there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 6. Uh, wherever I am, where am I? Examine yourself. Okay, verse. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are what? Disqualified. That means disconnected. But I trust that you will not, that you'll know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but you that you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. We can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. In this we also pray that you may be made complete. Therefore I write these things being absent, lest being present. I should use sharpness according to the authority which the Lord has given me for edification and not destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell, become complete, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Now, so there's that area where you and I must maintain our connection, which brings a full release being consistent, being faithful, staying connected, staying in God's presence. You know, we're waiting for that full release. Sometimes we see trinkles of it. It's like teasing. You know, it's like, man, I know it's coming. I can see it. I can taste it. I, I, I know parts of it. You know, it's like, well, and that's what he's asking you to do is be consistent to get to the full release. It's like somebody's always, if, if you were to follow a, a river back up to where it was coming from, you know, it's source. So we're always going from the resource 
to the source for full release. Galatians 5. Verse 13. For you, brethren, have been called to freedom or liberty, and do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Now these are, of course, we know that the works of the flesh will begin to disqualify us from our full release. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another before, beware lest you become, be consumed by one another. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish or that you desire. Again, but if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. We are called to freedom by being released from bondage. Amen. You know, so many people want to be free and they're not into a place of full release of freedom yet because they haven't been consistent in the cooperation of what God is asking them to do. Remember, the formula is deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. When individuals are not consistent in that, they cannot ever reach the full release of something. They can't release the full release of freedom, the full release of deliverance, the full release of healing, the full release of prosperity. They get partials. Luke 4. Luke 4. Hallelujah. In verse 16. Full release. Now Jesus came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom or liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set all liberty to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of the whole place of the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say today this scripture is what fulfilled in your hearing well they broke out you know what i mean so all who bore witness to him marveled at the gracious words with proceeded out of his mouth, and they said, is this not Joseph's son? In other words, so many times people can't still see that you are an offspring of God. They're still looking at you physically instead of spiritually. So a full release followed Jesus. Now, the release did not happen until he was filled with the Spirit. Because it's when he decreed right here, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. After that, the fullness of the presence of God and the anointing was put on Jesus. From that point, he went to the cross so that the full release could be released to me and you. Why? Because nothing can grow unless it first dies. Full release followed as the anointing increased. 2 Kings 2. Second Kings chapter 2. In 
In verse 1, and it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. Wait here. I got work to do. Hmm. Please, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, heck no. As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now, why did he not leave him? Because he knew that there was going to be a release. And he said, no way. I'm keeping my eyes on you. I am not leaving your sight until I get the fullness. Now, verse 3. Then the sons, now the sons of the prophets who were at Bithel came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Shut up. In other words, keep quiet. Now, you got to understand that here, were, these were the sons of these prophets who knew what was getting ready to happen. But none of the sons said that Elijah was their master. See, but they acknowledged that Elisha, that he knew that Elijah was his master. In other words, he was his covering. He was following him. And of course, the enemy always comes out to try and discourage us. Amen? You know, he's going to be taken away from you today. You know, the enemy's going to trip you up today. You know, you're this, you know. He always comes with something to try to mislead you or misdirect you. Hallelujah. So then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me to, on to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. He wasn't leaving. So now the sons of the prophets who were in Jericho came out to Elisha. And said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from you today? So he answered and said the same thing. Be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me onto the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on too. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry land. Come on, man. You talk about transit, you know? There was no buses. Didn't even have a horse. Didn't need to hitchhike. Just took out the mantle. Slap. That's fullness. Amen. Amen. So it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask. Okay, you can ask now. I, I want you to know something, that as God brings you through the process, he already knows your desire because he put it there. If you allow his desire in you to wait till he says, ask, a fullness always comes. The problem is everybody's always asking. Sometimes we're asking so much that God doesn't, it, it makes it like what well, you don't believe it or you're getting to get it the first time. Now, there's a difference in warfare. That's constant bombardment. Amen. But there's some things that we're just waiting on. He knows. You know, of course, then there was the one woman that pestered the judge, and the judge finally gave her what she wanted, right? But we don't need to pester the Father. <laughs> we need to wait on the Father. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Full release, maintaining focus on the mission. Ephesians 4.
course, Elijah was taken up. Elisha received the mantle, and he followed his master. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And Jesus gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Full release. That we should no longer be children. Amen? Amen? Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may what? Amen. Grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying itself in love. The fullness of Christ, the fullness of anointing. There was a full release. Everything of God's desire is to bring us to a position to receive a re full release. Amen? Amen? 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2. In verse 2, or verse 1. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, which means the plan. Amen? Be strong in the plan that is in Christ Jesus, not our plan, his plan. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to what? to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardship. In other words, you will be persecuted. People won't understand you. You will be tried and tested. You'll be challenged. Amen? You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier, entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Again, we are going back to the formula of denying yourself, picking up the cross, and following. See, so many times people are too involved in the affairs of life, involved in the affairs of more pleasure than they are of God's business. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. A hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not changed. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Full release. We all, look at, we start as a child, adolescent, adult, citizen, soldier, then warrior. And we want a full release of warrior. Amen. First Peter chapter four. In verse twelve. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory in God rests upon you. 
On their part he's blasphemed, but on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this manner. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. In other words, suffer those who suffer according to the will of God. Many suffer because of what they sow, they're reaping. Many bring suffering and stuff on themselves because of what comes out of their mouth, attitude, or whatever. Anything of the works of the flesh, you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. That brings a fiery trial. Amen? And one of the things we want to be is released from God's judgment. Amen? Psalm 43. You know, we bring so much stuff on ourselves. The enemy doesn't have to do anything. In fact, he goes on vacation in some people's lives. But they still blame the devil. <laughs> the devil did it. You reaped what you sowed. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 1. How many of y'all want a full vindication? Amen. Snapping yes. Vindicate me for I kill somebody. Oh, God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man. For you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Oh, send out your light and your truth. And let them lead me and let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O oh God, my God. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him the help of my confidence and my God. Vindication comes with full release. Amen. God will vindicate us in every area. As long as you can outrun your reaping. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Benefits of full release. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Yes, I love renewed youth. Benefits of full release. We'll close at Psalm 1. Again, we want a full release of healing. One of the things is we want a full release of forgiveness. But there's got to be a sincere repentance. Keep doing it over and over and over. Amen. Psalm 1. Praise God. Many of us, probably all of us, are still waiting on the full release of prosperity. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Here it is. 
Blessed is the man. Blessed means prosper. Nor, sin, nor stands in the path of a sinner's. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Uchawawa. But their delight is in the truth of the law of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. In other words, they consider and parallel themselves, align themselves with what God says before they say. Verse 3, this is what will happen for an individual. He will be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water. Man, that's constant flow. That brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does will what? Prosper. That's full release. But of course the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the reward or judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall and re rebellious shall perish. Again, prosperity is associated with full release. Those who prosper. Amen. Praise God. I know we all want a full release. Well, it takes death. It takes challenges. It takes suffering. It takes endurance. It takes trusting God. It takes never giving up, no matter how it feels. No matter who throws sticks and stones against you. It doesn't matter. That's why he says, deny yourself. That means we're to be dead. When people are in Christ and they physically die, they get a full release. Well, we don't have to wait till we're dead. Let's get dead to ourselves now to get a full release. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace and conviction so that we may walk away from all areas that would interfere with a full release. We forgive and bless all of the areas of individuals in our life. We forgive, bless, we remove ourselves and sever ourselves from all bitterness, from our past, and we hold no grudges, and we speak peace and blessing and prosperity to everyone that has tried to harm us and commit them into your hands. Lord, we just ask that you continue to deal with us so that we may be positioned to receive a full release from your hand in Jesus' name. Anybody said amen? amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.